Hello everyone, in today's topic we're gonna explore an article originally written on the Stolen History platform by the staff member user with the nickname Dreamtime. And basically he explores the possibility that the Biblical Garden of Eden was actually in the South Africa. So let's have a look on it. The world map by Albertinus de Virga from 1411 or 1415 is of Venetian origin and consists of two parts. A calendar with representations of the signs of the zodiac and a table for calculating the positions of the moon and the actual circular map of the world. It is a synthesis of a typical world map of the Middle Ages and a portal land. It is highly accurate representations of the supposedly then unexplored regions of Asia, Africa and Northern Europe, even Southern Africa. A few years before, historians say that the Portuguese circumnavigated it shows outlines that correspond to reality. The map was rediscovered in 1912 by an art collector in an antiquarian bookshop in Croatia, Albert Figdor. Its authenticity was later confirmed by the University of Innsbruck. The map's first known owner, the wealthy Viennese collector Albert Figdor, bought it in 1912 from a Dalmatian source after having it authenticated by Franz Ritter von Weiser, a well-known Austrian cartographical scholar. The place of storage indicated by Paolo de Vili in 1937, the French National Library in Paris, could not be confirmed. Its whereabouts after a failed auction in 1932 are considered uncertain in scholarly circles. Possibly it was stolen, according to the world map 1300-1492. The persistence of tradition and transformation, the map disappeared with its Jewish owners in 1932. This is at a time when the biblical history of Israel probably wasn't as established as today, before the founding of modern Israel in 1948, which is based upon the biblical narratives. Only Weiser, Gilhofer, and Ranchberg based in their work on the original map and not on copies. Unfortunately, the files of Gilhofer and Ranchberg were destroyed during the Second World War in Vienna. Just like the Holy Land map by Lucas Kranach, probably this one that is in the link up, reappeared in recent years, it may be possible that this map emerges again at one point. Although the question is if the rediscovered maps are still the same as the originals. On this map, a place that appears to be the Garden of Eden is located at the southernmost point of Africa from which the four rivers mentioned in Genesis flow inwards into the land. The place on the map resembles some visions of Atlantis, a round city with different layers. The diameter of the structure would be around 150 miles if it corresponds to reality. The way this supposed biblical Garden of Eden is shown is pretty interesting. What could it be? The structure is almost the size of South Africa, enough space to seat a new human race, if that's what happened in the Garden of Eden. Compare with the depiction of Eden from another map, Amundi, Hereford map on the left and Absdorf map on the right, on both maps the location of Eden corresponds to the modern location of Japan, and like Japan it's shown as an a island on the Hereford map. The description of the Ebstorf map says Asia is called after a queen of the same name. Its first region from the east is Paradise, a lovely and all around pleasant place, uninhabitable by humans and surrounded by a sky high wall of fire. In it is the wood of life, a tree, however, eats of its fruit does not grow old and never dies. What else do we have on the Vigra map? A place that looks like Gog and Magog behind the walls of Alexander? It should be noted that there are some hints that the original Bible stories actually took place in South Africa. It seems modern-day Jerusalem 
doesn't fit to the biblical descriptions for Jordan River and other areas. Most importantly, the area is too small. Jordan River on the left, if you can jump across it without getting wet, ask God to pour the waters. The Orange River to the right seems to fit better with the biblical descriptions. The Jordan River in the Middle East is not large enough to justify a parting of the waters by God. For example, the Israelites could have simply walked through it. There are no archaeological signs that the riverbed of Jordan River was way larger in history. Some speculate that the true Jordan River is actually the Orange River in Africa. Just like the Queen of Sheba is moved by Jewish scholars from Ethiopia to present-day Yemen, even though there are no written source in ancient history mentioning Sheba in the context of Yemen, probably for political reasons the potential relevance of Africa for biblical history seems to be neglected in this case as well. Israel Finkelstein and Neil Asher Silberman suggest that the kingdom was located in southern Arabia. Suggest is something of an understatement. They just brush off of every other possibility. Ezion Geber is located at the site of Tel El Khalifah, on the northern tip of the Gulf of Aqaba. The identification of Ophir is less certain. Some scholars have suggested that it is no more than a legend, a Near Eastern equivalent of the mythical El Dorado. But in the Table of Nations in Genesis 10, 28-29, it appears together with Sheba, which should no doubt be located in southern Arabia. And none of Solomon's trading adventures is more famous than the Queen of Sheba's state visit to Jerusalem with camels carrying spices, gold, and precious stones. At the same time, we have the black Hebrew Israelites who push a highly distorted self-centric view of biblical history. The De Virga map seems to be used by nationalist Africans to support their claims. In this case, they may be right though. For what it's worth, maybe it doesn't matter to find the one and only location of the Bible. It seems almost all places everywhere in the world have some form of connection to the Bible stories. A couple of places in South Africa with a Biblical background. So we have Bersab and Benthanian here. And then Pella. Bethesda. Jerusalem. And something with Abraham. Of course, this could be explained conventionally with the missionaries naming these places after the Bible. Well, let's have a look on some interesting places. This is a resort in Namibia, in the middle of nowhere. Was it really built anew or only renovated to hide the ancient history and biblical connection? Down below we have the Duwazib Castle, really built in 1909 or older. Wikipedia says that Duvisib Castle, a grand pseudo-medieval looking fortress on the hills of the semi-arid southern Namib, region of Namibia, 72 kilometers southwest of Maltaho, Hardup region. It was built in 1909 to serve as the residence of Hans Heinrich von Wolf, a German military officer. Since 1979, the castle has been owned by the government. There doesn't seem to be any place in the world that doesn't claim a biblical history, from Japan over Germany, California to France. The location doesn't matter to me. The Bible is too censored to use it as a historical document and due to the worldwide spread of Christianity, we see references to the Bible everywhere. In this case, what I found most interesting is that we have a map that disappeared under mysterious circumstances which showed a place for Biblical Paradise Garden of Eden that contradicts the other maps that usually place it near the Middle East or India. It seems the Jewish family that owned the map was the niece from the guy who originally discovered the map in 1912 and her husband. They had intended to sell the map in 1932. 
When Figdor died on 22nd January 1927, his magnificent collections became the property of his niece Margaret Becker Walls, the wife of a prominent Heidelberg lawyer. If Becker Walls withdrew the map from the auction on Fisher's advice and withdrew it, she did, neither of them would have had much opportunity to proceed further. Early 1933, Hitler and the National Socialists came to power in Germany. Father Fischer was still at the Jesuit College of Stella Matutina in Feldgrich and would soon have felt both the worsening relations between Germany and Austria and the anti-Catholicism of the Nazis. By April of 1934, Stella Matutina's large contingent of German students had to transfer to San Blaise in Switzerland because of the Austrian Jesuit school could no longer grant them valid diplomas. No published author has been more fervently convinced of a cartographical record of Norse transatlantic sailings that, than the German Ptolemaic scholar Father Joseph Fischer, whose probable ties to the Vinland map and demonstrable ties to the auction house of Gilhofer and Ranchberg in 1932 merit further scrutiny in connection with the disappearance of the De Virgam world map. Was this a Zionist attempt at rewriting history before founding modern-day Israel, or did the Jewish family disappear in the National Socialist concentration camps? What we have at least is a connection with a Jesuit father. One possibility is that this map showed an earlier attempt by the church history forgers to place the mythological Eden in a different place. But later they went with India, Asia, and that's why the map had to disappear until it somehow appeared again in 1912. Maybe the place where humans got created was neither South Africa or Asia, but both were actually attempts to rewrite history. Although the De Virga map doesn't show any overt Christian church symbolism like the other map Amundis, with the exception of Paradise and Gog and Magog, which is why I consider the Vigra map a bit more credible than the others. The Hereford and Abstorf maps are full of blatant church propaganda. The existence of Paradise and the Alexander Wall on this map suggests it's either church propaganda as well or both were real and only later adopted as Christian mythology. Thank you for your time. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and leave your comments down below. This really helps to push these videos to more people that are asking questions.